Air Force Ones are probably the most bought, the most popular, the most easy to crease shoe out there. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you how you actually could be brainwashed by looking at these shoes. So the chances are a high percentage of you watching this video have a pair of Air Force Ones. Even my brother who has zero fashion sense has a pair, albeit they're a bit of a goofy colorway. And if you by any chance don't own a pair of Air Forces, then you've probably had an all white shoe sometime in your life. Everyone knows the reason why Air Forces are so good is because they can literally go with any outfit. Smart casual, with track suits, t-shirts and shorts, and even school huh? uniform. Although if you see someone wearing Air Forces in school, then it's going to be a black pair because those guys are on crud. But that is the reason why people are drawn to picking up a pair of Air Forces, because they literally go with anything. Now let me do a little bit of explaining. The Air Force One was released in 1982. Everyone knows about it. And the infamous Panda Dunks were released in 2021. The Panda Dunks have been bought at such a rapid rate since 2021 and are becoming the alternative to wearing white Air Force Ones. Reason why they're infamous is because people are clowning the amount of people who wear pandas online all the time. There are videos where people do Panda Dunk counts in their daily life. People are trying to make them an unpopular choice to wear because of how popular they're getting. And seeing as how the Air Force came out before the internet was even invented, there wasn't a platform to allow hate for the Air Force One like we've seen with the Panda Dunks. Obviously everyone knows about Air Force Ones. They're a really nice model of Nike sneakers, so when YouTube and other social medias were released, people started to make reviews on the sneaker. All positive in fact, I don't think I've seen a bad review on the Air Force One online at all. And just to clarify, that's not what this video is. I literally have a pair of white Air Force Ones right here. They're a weird version though. I held off on the Air Force One trend for a couple of years just because everyone said they crease so much. But then Nike released a Flyknit version of the Air Force One. And for those of you who don't know what Flyknit is, well, it doesn't crease. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to pick up my first ever Air Force One. But the downside to these is that they stain so easily and you can't get rid of the stains. So if you're looking for an upside to buying normal Air Force Ones, then, well, the leather, you can actually clean it. I'm never buying an all-white shoe ever again. Unless I become rich. Then I can buy loads of normal Air Force Ones. Anyway, where I'm going with all of this is that people who wear Nike Panda Dunks are deemed to have no fashion style or no fashion sense at all. And what I'm saying is, shouldn't the Air Force One be in that category as well? It's literally a plain white shoe. There is not a single other color on there. The Pandas even have more than one color, although it is <laughs> black and white. I quite like the Panda Dunks, despite them being an NPC shoe, but... The whole point of this video, guys, I'm going to be telling you alternatives to wear to your creased and dusty Air Force Ones. As I think a lot of people want to find an alternative shoe because they're either getting bored of Air Force Ones or they just want a new style. So let's get started with literally any colorway of the Nike 97. I have a grey, orange and white pair and I love them. I've had them for quite a long time now, as you can see by the Air Max bubbles. And even though they're battered, I wear them all the time. And that's the thing, Air Forces only look their best when they're fresh out of the box. It doesn't matter if you kept your Air Force One pristine over a long period of time because the most likely thing is they're gonna have a little little crease but it shows off so massively you aren't getting away from that crease and it's irreversible like there's literally no way you can get rid of it whereas a 97 can be creased and that isn't even that bad it's literally just a tiny little bit of creasing it looks perfectly normal and 97s can actually look worn but still look really hard that's something i'm bringing into my clothing choices now as well like ain't no way i'm buying a canada goose coat even if i'm rich although i probably actually would if i'm rich i don't know what i'm talking about because i wouldn't feel comfortable wearing it i would just be worried about every little thing touching my 1.2k coat like even sitting down on a train like do you even know what people do in those seats? The 97s have so many clean colorways as well. The ones which are on screen right now are my favorites. They're also much more interesting to look at if you pick up a pair like these. Due to the different sections on the shoe, there are so many different design opportunities. Now there is another shoe which I really like, the Nike 95, but I won't touch on it now because it's literally the exact same as the Nike 97. Everything I've said about the Nike 97 applies to the Nike 95s, they're valid. Just quickly guys, do you want to be in one of my videos? I'm going to be brutally rating Notice the word brutally. Brutally rating your outfits and drip in an upcoming video. If you want to be reviewed, then go DM my Instagram account, BTS Clovia, and send me your drip. But now let's talk about my favorite shoe of all time, Jordan 4s. Most Jordan 4s are more expensive than a Nike 97 and a Nike 95, so definitely keep that in mind with the shoes I'm about to say. But unless a new overhauled sneaker comes out, I don't see the Jordan 4s falling off for another couple of years. It's probably been the boss of streetwear sneakers for the past couple of years, and obviously, like I said, it will be in the future years. And I'm seeing it more and more in the street. Like, there's so many people walking around with Jordan 4s now. Although, Panda Buy has become a new thing. 
I don't believe there's actually like one single bad colorway of Jordan 4. Like obviously I made a video ranking 4s in a tier list and I put quite a lot in F. But but the thing is that's compared to the other beautiful Jordan 4s above the ones at F. The ones I put at F are still really nice. Jordan brand doesn't release 4s that often. I think maybe two to four times a year. So they literally haven't had the chance to have a bad release. There's a new rumored Jordan 4 coming up actually. The Jordan 4 red cements. They're so clean and I really want to get them. There's a lot of high demand for these shoes and like most Jordan 4s there's a lot of high demand demand and low supply which is what is keeping Jordan 4s on top. Now I'm going to tell you about the sneaker which is most likely going to be my next pickup. Nike TNs. Very similar to Air Maxes. Well they are Air Maxes as well. But I don't know there's something about TNs which are so good. I think I like them because I'm from England and a lot of people wear them in England compared to say in the States. I don't think many people wear them over in USA. So it's always like in my mind that people are wearing them. Although I do also think they're popular in Europe but not as much as here in the UK. A pair of plain black or plain white TNs go hard. TNs give me black Air Force One vibes so if you want to go for that look then there's a good reason for you to go pick these up. Anyway there are actually loads of variations to the Nike TN. There are the bog standard TN Air Max Plus which have loads of variations which have sick designs. The TN Air Max Plus 3s go hard. The black and white colorways of these shoes are so nice. There's also the TN Air Max Terrascapes. These are very similar to the bog standard TNs but in my opinion give off even more of a black Air Force One vibe. If you ask me what order I put those three styles of shoe that I've just mentioned I would definitely put Jordan 4 first. TNs come second and 97s come third but it is a tough decision between 97s and TNs. If you want more wacky shoes then I definitely say go for 97s seeing as how they have them more diverse colorway but then again tns do have some pretty mad colorways obviously air force ones are amazing straight out the box they look amazing most people and this is pretty much everyone who wear air force ones for a long period of time yeah they don't look amazing anymore i know a guy that had his new air force ones for two weeks i saw him on his first day of wearing them he was so gassed fresh out the box they were mint white and they look so good like they look so clean the white was literally shining and then i see him two weeks later the laces are kind of yellow and they've frayed and the actual shoe had weird black marks on them like i'm not saying that's going to happen to you i don't even know what this guy was doing he could have been up to some weird stuff so for me and i i've learned this i won't be buying another all white shoe just because i know how dirty they're gonna get like if you're on a budget and this is like your only pair of shoes in like a couple years then i would 100 percent go for a different colorway all whites are the best colorway and look the best they're probably the nicest sneaker out there but if you're gonna go outside of them and not just sit in your room with them then maybe go for an all black air force one or maybe a non white colored tn but if you really want to buy an all white pair of air force ones now even after hearing what i've said then i would go for it now i remember when i was growing up and like walking in and out of jd and i'd see air forces priced at around like 80 pounds and then obviously they got even more popular due to social media and there's inflation all these things to result in the bog standard all white air force one being priced at 110 pounds there is an air force one priced at 130 pounds and it's said not to crease i have no idea whether this is true or not as i've literally never seen anyone wear them or tell me that they've got them but in terms of the 110 pound pair i think they could definitely in the coming years see a price rise possibly to the 130 pound pairs price i'm not going to be picking up a normal pair now but i think some point in my life maybe in like the next five six years maybe i'll buy one then just because i want to experience what everyone else has had with this sneaker i kind of had it with my fly knit pair but not really i got caught being too clever with that the air force not creasing guys i talked about my jordan 4 tier list video earlier so if you want to watch that now it's on screen now and if you're not interested in that then maybe you'd be interested in the downfall of JD Sports. It's a video where I take a look at how popular JD was back in the day and how not so popular it is now. 